Hello everyone, thank you for virtually attending my talk today. I'm Samin, currently doing my PhD at NC State. And today we're going to be looking at our work where we looked into PCI DSS compliance of Android applications. So one day I was about to grab lunch from Burger King and my friend told me that there is this Burger King app which has many offers which you won't get if you order at the local restaurant. So I downloaded the app, I was about to order my food and when I was about to pay, I noticed that there is this option to pay using Google Pay which is convenient and secure because they use tokenization so that these consumer apps won't be getting your credit card number directly. But there was also this method to pay providing your credit card number which poses the additional risk of exposing them. In our prior study we found that more than 4000 out of 50,000 apps from Google Play collects credit card numbers from users. And since they're collecting credit card numbers, this makes them responsible for protecting this information. And the regulation that dictates how that should happen is called PCI DSS. PCI DSS stands for Payment Card Industries Data Security Standard, which is a guideline for how credit card numbers should be handled by any system acquiring them. It is regulated by PCI Security Standard Council. These rules are mandatory, meaning failure to comply to them comes with some monetary penalty. Even though PCI DSS requirements are broad, there are a lot of these requirements that don't matter for a mobile application. For example, setting up a firewall is not app applicable in a mobile context. We marked six PCI DSS requirements that do apply to a mobile context by accessing the document. These requirements ensure the secure storage and sh sharing of cardholder data and authentication data in a mobile application. The information in a credit card that represents the cardholder is called cardholder data, for example, the credit card number. And the information that is used to authenticate the cardholder is called sensitive authentication data, for example, the three-digit card verification code on the back side of a credit card. The goal of this work was to build a static analysis tool called Card Plans to determine if Android applications are handling credit card data properly by complying to PCI DSS. But achieving this was not so trivial and came with several technical challenges. First, we had to determine which of these requirements are applicable to a mobile application and how do you build a program analysis tool to detect these requirements which are stated at a high level. Again, in Android, there is no well-defined API for taking credit card numbers as there are API for taking IMEI or phone number. And finally, we needed to do some manual validation on the results because we were relying on a static analysis approach. Usually credit card numbers are provided to the application through its user interface. The programmatic approach is to grab a reference of the UI widget by calling the findViewById method and then call the getText method. We use our prior tool UIREF which uses natural language processing on any label or hint associated to the UI widget to determine what kind of data it is collecting and we extract the resource identifier of that widget which is collecting credit card number and provide that to the next phase of our analysis. In this phase, we use an existing static analysis tool called Amandroid to generate a data dependency graph from the APK. We then parameterize the data dependency graph with the right context so we can take track the flow of the credit card number throughout the application. We design our graph traversal algorithms to check if the credit card information goes to any data persistent sync like writing to a file or network sync. For some PCI DSS requirement, this was sufficient. For example, where we needed to verify if the application is storing CBC, which is a violation of PCI DSS, this approach was sufficient. But for some requirements, we need to ensure the credit card information is going through some intermediate methods to meet the PCI DSS requirement. For example, the PCI DSS requirement which says encrypt card, uh, card holder data or credit card number before storing, we look for common cryptographic methods in the intermediate path so that data is obfuscated before it reaches the sink. In this table, we enlist the six PCI checks we performed along with the associated PCI DSS requirement at a high level. For example, the first test was to check if the cardholder data is stored in the app. For this, we marked the find view by ID methods, which are parameterized with credit card number taking input widgets as the source and some data persistent methods as things. Here, we do not check 
for any intermediate methods. That's why the required column is empty. But for test T6, we check if some if the same data is going to any external application unobfuscated. Therefore, we check for obfuscation methods which are required and, and thus they are listed in column R. We implement our tool in such a way that these source, sync, and required sets uh, can be further extended. Uh, there was an additional lightweight heuristic to check if the app is using bad socket factory or trust manager classes or bypassing hostname verification. And that was just by looking at the application code, not uh, through any data flow analysis. And therefore, we did not include that in this table. For building our data set, we first scraped top 500 apps from every category in Google Play. And reason for choosing most popular applications was popular apps are going to be impactful. However, as we have seen from our prior study that most of the applications would not be collecting credit card information, thus that would increase our analysis time significantly. Therefore, we filtered this set by looking into the resource files of the APKs if they have any credit card related string. Uh, this narrowed down our scope to a set of 1868 apps, saving a lot of computation time uh, at the price of including false negatives. We ran our input widget resolution framework UIREF and data dependency graph generator M Android on these applications and finally got 358 data dependency graphs. The remaining ones could not be analyzed by these tools or did not collect credit card information. So our test was on 358 popular apps from Google Play. We ran our tool on this set and our tool reported 20 of them had at least one flow uh, that could potentially be violating PCIDSS. We found another 20 apps that had bad socket factory or trust manager classes. We reverse engineered the source code using a commercial tool called JEP Decompiler and looked into the code to validate our findings. We confirmed six apps were PCIDSS non-compliant out of the 20 apps raising red flag for having a potential non-compliant flow. The other 20 apps having bad socket factory classes were false positives because they were either dead code or built for debug versions or they were using bad socket factory to send irrelevant data like, like analytics but not credit card data. Uh, all the non-compliant apps and the tests they failed are listed on the table below. Here are some of our highlighted findings. We found most of the applications are doing it right, which indicates popular applications mandate good coding practice with industry regulations. We found all the apps were performing hostname verification and certificate validation correctly. Uh, they were not using HTTP URL to send credit card data, and they were not insecurely sharing them with other applications. However, we did find six applications were violating PCIDSS with collectively more than 1.5 million downloads. Also, we see a common trend, of, common trend of writing sensitive data like credit card numbers in device logs without realizing its implications. We notified the six developers to the email address enlisted in Google Play. Just one of the developers responded to our email admitting the flaws in their app and assured to fix them. They also appreciated our work. Um, a 16.6 percent response rate is not ideal but it is not unexpected either considering responding to such email could raise liability concerns. Here are some of the deeper dive we did on some of the non-compliant apps. First we have this credit card reader app which insecurely pr prints credit card numbers in device logs. Device logs are basically used for debugging purposes and they can be easily retrieved if someone has physical access to the device. And the interesting fact here is this is a merchant app, meaning a merchant uses this app in his device to accept payment from customers, and it has more than 500k downloads. So if any merchant is using this app to serve, say, 100 customers per day, this app is secretly logging all of their credit card numbers, which the merchant can get access of. Thus, this app would be exposing 50 million credit card numbers daily. Then we have this pretzel selling app, which writes both credit card numbers and CVC in device log. It was clearly mentioned in PCI DSS requirement 3.2 not to store CVC in device logs. Also, what this app is doing here is it is storing some value in the shared reference, but it is using the plain text credit card number 
as the key of whatever they are storing, which gets stored in an XML file in the shared prefs directory of the application. Firstly, this is making the app PCIDSS non-compliant, but this can also be dangerous if any app with escalated privilege can access that information. And lastly, we see this application is trying to generate a key using a secure random object. Initializing this secure random object with a constant or predictable value, we can see it significantly. And that is what we see here. They are seeding the secure random object with the most predictable thing throughout the application, the credit card number. There were several limitations of our tool which we already discussed. There were some limitations due to the underlying tools we used. For example, the popular metro app Marta. What UIDF identified as a credit card number was found to be a bridge card number. Some of the things we did not look into was weak cipher suits or to detect hard-coded cryptographic keys in the application, which would be left for future work. The other limitations are well discussed in the paper. So to summarize, we built card clients to perform PCI DSS compliance checks on Android applications. And according to our study, the landscape of popular Android application in terms of PCI DSS is fairly positive. Still, we were successful to detect real PCI DSS violation on several apps. Good news is we have open sourced our code, which you can find at Whisper NCCU Git repo. So please check it out and give us your feedback. So I want to wrap up by thanking my team members from NCSU and IBM. And at this point, I'm happy to take any question.